I am like a kid in a sweet shop. Tesla Energy have invited me in early. As you'll see, there's nobody around but the staff. That's because there's some special new features and things you need to know about the Power Wall 3 by Tesla Energy. This is going to be so powerful and so interesting. If you think you're going to be buying a Power Wall 3, you'll want to watch this. Let's go. So first of all, let's have a recap of what we know already. I've got the full product suite here, and there's a little bit more later on that I'm gonna show you that gives you a real inside scoop. We're gonna see behind the lid and also the expansion pack and a little extra that may well save you a little bit of money because uh, there's an alternative version of the Powerwall 3 that's now available. First of all, this is the Powerwall 3. You'll have probably seen this in some of the other content that we've put together. So it's a bit of a recap if we go over it. This is a 13 point five kilowatt hour battery 100% depth of discharge that's the full 13.5 kilowatt hours it's fully usable now one of the powerful things about Powerwall 3 is the fact that it's got an 11.04 kilowatt inverter so it can meet multiple demands at the same time what this means to you is you could meet the demand of a heat pump of a cooker a kettle all simultaneously now if you've got one of the Powerwall 3s all by themselves just as a lone unit like this one behind me they charge up at a speed of five kilowatts. Now the DC expansion pack, which we'll see later on, you increase that charge speed to eight kilowatts. There are a couple of material differences between the look of the Powerwall 3 and the DC expansion pack. More about that a little bit later. So the top three things that I think you really need to know is the fact that this can be mounted both inside and outside. So the Powerwall is really powerful, as it says in the name, it goes all the way down to minus 20. So effectively, they've got individual cell level heating. What this basically means is in a morning, if it's really cold, the power wall's intelligent enough to be able to identify this, run a preheat function, and essentially prep itself ready for daytime use. And I think you'll agree with me is the fact that it's really neat and tidy. It's an all-in-one unit. So I'll show you a little bit about this later on, but effectively, the inverters in the top, your battery packs in the bottom. So this is it. That's the kit all housed within this one unit. It looks really slick and tidy. You can have up to four main units of the Powerwall 3. So 54 kilowatt hours of battery storage with four of the main leading power walls. On one of the leading power walls, you can then also have three additional expansion packs. So it makes for a lot of battery storage in the event that you want to go for power wall. You're kind of left with any single phase home, enough battery storage should you want to expand to that limit. Now, another thing to know about the Powerwall 3 is the fact that it has three maximum power point trackers. What this basically means to you is we can have three different solar arrays wired into the side of the Powerwall. Now, because the inverter's built into the side, effectively, we can just take the cable straight to it. There's no other parts and components aside from an isolator that you would need to use as part of the kit. So this leads me on to the third great benefit of Powerwall 3. One of the options that's available is the Powerwall 3 with a whole house backup, which leads me quite nicely onto this product that's here. Most people don't realize, and this is one of the key benefits of Powerwall 3, that Powerwall 3 can come with the gateway, which is this part here. This houses a contactor inside of it that's constantly monitoring for grid outages. If you suffer with lots of power cuts as a home, this system will kick in almost seamlessly to be able to back your home up. So if you're there in the middle of cooking your tea, your tea can carry on cooking. You can effectively have a shower without the grid power. The gateway can do both three phase connections and single phase, but the power wall currently only does single phase backup. So if you do have a three phase loads, it is the case that the gateway can track and monitor those three phases and the power wall can meet the demand of a single phase. Coming on to the next product here is the wall connector. So if you're an EV customer, this is something you might like the look of. Now, a common misperception with the wall connector is the fact that the, this charging head will only be compatible with a Tesla car. That's incorrect. These are compatible with all Type 2 charging heads. One thing you will note if you do have a Tesla car is the fact that there is a nice little white button here and when you press it, a flap opens quite nicely. And why is that relevant to this kit that's here? Well, that's a really great question. That's relevant because you can do charge on solar provided you have a Tesla car and the right setup to go alongside it. So one of the things I've been allowed to tell you today is the fact that the Powerwall 3 is now gonna be available without a gateway. 
So what does this mean for you? So with the traditional setup that happened with the Powerwall 3, effectively the only option for you is to have it with whole house backup. Tesla Energy have basically realized, well, not everybody wants house backup. Not everybody gets power cuts. So now with the help of a little remote meter, effectively we can remove this, which would mean a Powerwall 3 installation gets about a thousand pounds cheaper. So in a previous video, I said with a grid application, we'd be looking in the region of seven and a half, seven thousand seven hundred pounds fully fitted with a gateway. So with house backup, without a gateway, you're probably closer towards six and a half thousand pounds. That makes it hyper, hyper competitive with some of the other brands and manufacturers that are out there. And you're getting the premium brand of Tesla as well. Now, when it comes without the gateway, the Powerwall 3 still has a 10-year unlimited cycles warranty. So the warranty itself is not affected effectively by the discounting of the gateway. The main difference between the two setups, you still get all the functionality of the Powerwall 3, charging, discharging, its ability to be able to do uh, weather forecasting, all of that great stuff is still completely included within the Powerwall 3. The only tangible difference is when the grid power goes off. So if you have a power cut effectively, if you have the gateway, your power will stay on so long as there's power in the battery or solar being generated. However, without the gateway, the power would just go off. So the power wall three would just safely disconnect. And when the power comes back on again, essentially the power would then just re-engage back with the power wall three. So that's the main difference. If you're not prone to power cuts, then you could just skip the gateway, save some money and go on a holiday instead with it, which would seem to make a bit of sense. It could really reduce the overall time it takes to give you that return on investment. Now, if it's the case that you then started getting power cuts and that become more of a regular occurrence, then we can always add the gateway in at a later date. So I'm gonna get onto a behind the scenes look at the Powerwall 3. I'm also gonna give you a deep dive into the DC expansion pack and show you side by side in just a second, which I think you'll find really powerful. But just before I do, I get asked so many questions about the actual uh, Tesla Energy app and what it looks behind the scenes for the Powerwall 3. So if you've got a Tesla car already, this will just be a simple If you have a Tesla car, so that's a Model Y, Model 3, or even one of the old Model Xs, you'll be able to swipe across from your existing display settings. So you go on your standard car app, swipe across, and you're gonna access to the Tesla Energy mobile phone app that looks a little bit like this. It's very slick, it's very intuitive, and it's very simple to use. That's the one thing I would note. You can get really powerful energy graphs, so you'll be able to see how much your home is using, uh, effectively what power has been drawn in from the grid, what benefits solar has been given towards your house, as well in a really simple and straightforward, easy to understand format. You'll be able to skip between day, month and year within these power graphs. So you'll be able to get a real comprehensive overview of what's happening with your energy and how much energy you're saving. You'll then get access to the main page there where you would be able to see effectively what your solar generation was doing, what the power wall was doing and the demand that's being sought and what was being drawn in from the grid. If you actually have a Tesla car, one of the cool little features is you'll also be able to see that underneath the garage on the right hand side. You'll see here, you'll be able to set up backup usage. So this is if you have a gateway, you'll be able to set how much power is sat in reserve behind the mobile phone app. So if you go off grid, you can make sure there's always a reserve there sat ready and waiting. Now the app may well change slightly depending upon the actual region that you're within. So just check your local app guide for this. But this is what you look like. You see you've got the actual car there that I mentioned a second ago and you can label the car up with whatever you see fit. If you've got multiple power walls, that's gonna show on there as well. You'll be able to see how grid independent you are. If you've got charge on solar, which this has got here, that's gonna be able to show, which is a feature available if you've got the both a Tesla car and the Powerwall 3 and solar panels all on the same system. The app is really powerful. Let's have a roll onto this DC expansion pack. So normally installers do not want to show you behind the hood. However, I've been given a bit of access today to be able to show you what's behind the hood of a Powerwall 3. So closest towards me, we have the full-blooded Powerwall 3. So this is the inverter that sat at the top here. And then to this side, we have the DC expansion pack. One thing you'll notice is the fact that they're extremely similar. The main difference is the fact that the Powerwall 3 is ever so slightly wider, but they share the same height and width dimensions. The really cool thing that they've come up with is the fact that they've got a little connection lead that goes between the side. So to be able to expand the Powerwall in the future is a really straightforward process. 
process. It's a really simple lead, a bracket, and you can effectively put a DC expansion pack by the side. Well, they're both 13.5 kilowatt hour batteries. The DC expansion pack effectively just doesn't have the inverter at the top, so it's battery only. It's therefore significantly cheaper than a full-blooded Powerwall 3. You can either mount the DC expansion pack to the side, like you can see demonstrated here. You need to buy a glass front, so it can be slightly more expensive that way. Or you can mount a DC expansion pack behind the back of the full Powerwall 3. You can actually mount a total of three expansion packs to one of the main leading Powerwalls. So as an engineer myself, and this is getting into the real nitty gritty here, I absolutely love some of the techie bits that they've actually done with the Powerwall 3. So if you have a look here, this is your battery pack. So this is 13.5 kilowatt hours worth of battery storage. Look how small it is. I know that sounds really crazy, but some of the other battery manufacturers you see out there have massive battery packs to get 13.5 kilowatt hours usable energy packed all into the base there. So that's something I really like. We have our AC connections down the side so they can get let in. There's little metal bungs that we can knock out at the side there for any stuffing glands. Or what I really like when we're setting these up is rear entry. So you'll see here, there's little rear entry blanks so we can knock these out come through the back with cables and wire in so they look floating on a wall it's something that you'd have to ask your installer specifically about and it's of course case specific but the fact that they've thought of these tiny little bits from a functionality perspective i think is pretty epic we've got data connections up the top we've got like an rs485 connection so if the power wall sat without a gateway this basically can give the power wall the data and information it needs to know what your home is doing so it can really to home demands and then we've got our DC connections over at the side you'll see there one two three indicating the fact that there's three maximum power point trackers the one thing I like is the fact that these use a little bladed connection instead of an MC4 which is I think just a little bit simpler actually from an engineer perspective in order to be able to physically wire it in if you're watching from over the pond your version may well be slightly different to this one we can see here and the ones over in America actually have six maximum power point trackers so you can have six strings if you think about it you can wire up to 20 kilowatts worth of solar which is essentially three strings of about 15 panels each all into here and this inverter can process all of that energy it's absolutely tiny by way of an inverter. There's a load of redundant space, if anything, that's simply just done for the external aesthetics. We then have these little tiny grub screws that go in the side that must be replaced every time we take the lid on and off because this is fully flood proof, effectively up to about 60 centimeters, I believe, all the way up to here. So if there was outside and there was a flood, the power wall can effectively continue working. And as I say, the only main difference between this one here and the DC expansion pack straight next to it, it is simply just the fact that it doesn't have one of these in the top. The thing to know, if you do have an expansion pack, your rate of discharge, so the 11.04 kilowatts doesn't change, but your charge speed does. It goes from five kilowatts to eight when it's combined with the two together. There's a few different sizes of harness lead. It's not one set size. If you can't have the expansion pack right next to it, or you can't have it behind it, because maybe there's a car blocking in your garage, you could effectively mount this further away if you wanted to, because there are a few different harness sizes. The harness can also go in the left and right, They've just kind of thought of just about everything when it comes to the techie side of things. And as you'll see, they're simple, straightforward, and I really, really like them. If you want to find out a little bit more about the Powerwall 3, I did a full deep dive over at Tesla in Manchester, where they very kindly invited me over to their store. So make sure you check it out. Thanks for watching.